Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jacob Wilson, and today's topic is going to be one of the most fundamental topics there are, is that how do I read a nutrition label? If this is your first time to the channel, and, and you like this content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you really want to support the channel, share this video, and smack that bell for more notifications. So, listen, one of the most complex things, when you go to a store, you look at that nutrition label, and it's, it's not simple, it's not that intuitive, okay? You have to realize that you can break it down to how many calories does this have. You know, on average, your general average person is going to consume about 2,000 calories a day, let's say. So look at the calories and see how many am I getting in a day. Sometimes you might look at a nutrition label and you might go, damn, that's like 800 calories, right? That's like 40% of my average calories in a day. Is that something I want to spend my time on, right? So calories are first. Then you're gonna to wanna to look at your fats, okay? People demonize fats all the time, but we need fats in our body. We need them for healthy hormones. We need them for a healthy sex drive, a healthy recovery, hair, skin. When you're looking at fats, when you actually look at the ingredients, or, or you're looking actually at the fats, you basically wanna make sure that you have some polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats. Those have a lot of anti-inflammatory benefits to them. And you wanna stay away from products that list things like trans fats, okay? That's bad, that might cause a lot of potential disease things. Now the next tricky part on a label that's all the rage right now is carbohydrates, okay? When you look at carbohydrates, you wanna look at carbs, and then right underneath carbs, you're gonna see fiber, all right? And what we like to calculate is it, by, by knowing how many carbs you're, you're actually consuming in, in that meal or in that package, is carbohydrates minus fiber, okay? So in essence, let's just say, for example, that a product has um, 20 grams of carbs and has five grams of fiber, then that means you have a net of 15 grams of carbs, all right? That's gonna be real important for like, if you're on a low carb diet or you're trying to watch your carbs, or you're trying to lose fat, those 15 grams, not the fiber, is what's gonna impact you from raising blood sugar and insulin levels. The last part of the label is your protein. We consider something more high protein if it's greater than 15, greater than 20 grams of protein, okay? Protein can be very tricky. Oftentimes, people look at a label and go, oh, wow, this is, it. first off, they'll read protein bar, high protein bar, okay, by whatever brand, okay? And if you look at that, you go, oh, cool, it's high protein, it says it on there, you don't read the label. I guarantee you, look at like all the granola bars that they say high protein, it might have like eight, nine grams of protein. That's not high protein at all. You gotta be above 15, 20 grams to say you're really high protein. And the reason why it's the case is that's how many grams you need to really start building muscle and losing fat. Now past that, when you talk about protein or anything, okay, you really wanna look on that label below and see the order that ingredients are listed, okay? Let's say you purchase a protein bar. You say it goes, oh wow, that's got 20 grams of protein. Dr. Wilson said that's high protein. Now you look at that label and the first ingredient, let's say is soy. And the second one's rice, okay? You know, and then maybe some collagen. What that basically is gonna mean is that uh, those proteins, when it, you start off with plant proteins, it lowers the quality of that protein bar and you're not gonna make, uh, you're not gonna lose as much fat, you're not gonna build as much muscle. So you want the first ingredients to be either dairy-based protein or um, meat-based protein um, or egg-based protein when we're talking about optimizing body composition. And the last thing, going back to those carbs, obviously look at the sugar content, right? So if you have your carbs, your fiber, and your sugar, generally speaking, at the higher percentage of those carbs are sugar, it's gonna be more prone to making you hungrier. Um, if it's less sugar, higher fiber, it's gonna make you more prone to being full. So guys, I hope this helps out on, on how to read a label, and I'll see you next time.